Well, a typical day starts uh, generally about 7.30 in the morning or so. Um, I'll come in and uh, thanks to technology, uh, we'll review between 25 and 40 emails that will have come in during the overnight. Uh, that's probably a, a typical day. I'll review the calls for service and uh, get a good handle or a good feel for what went on uh, during the 16 or so hours that I wasn't in and get a feel, speak with the supervisors about uh, important events or things of note that the community should be concerned about that uh, I would want to know about as well. My dad was a reserve police officer in Biddeford many, many, many years ago. I graduated from Biddeford High School in 1974. Um, Ten days or so after graduating from high school, I was in the military, actually I was in the Army and joined the military police from there. So I've, I've had this uh, desire to become a police officer for a long time. I was released from the service in the summer of 1976, joined the Kennebunk Port Police Department as a summer officer, and before the summer was out, I'd been hired by the city of Saco. Uh, that would have been in the summer of 1976, and I've been here since. Have you enjoyed your job so far? I have. I've, I've worked uh, a variety of jobs. I got hired, frankly, as a dispatcher. Initially moved to a patrol officer. I became a patrol sergeant in 1981. I served as a sergeant for 21 uh, years, and I've been police chief now for eight. Well, a former chief, chief before me, noted once that we aren't Mayberry RFD anymore. And we aren't, and perhaps never really were, but uh, we've got a relatively lower crime rate than some of the surrounding communities. We're pleased with where we are. I think Saco is inherently a very safe community to, uh, to live in. There isn't a time of day that we could look at and say, gee, you're less safe now than you would be in any other time of day. Saco remains a small community. We've grown significantly since the mid-70s when I started. I think we had about 11,000 or 11,500 people now. We're up to about 18,500 and growing fairly rapidly still. Uh, the nature of the face of crime has changed as technology has changed our jobs. Technology has changed also the way people tend to take advantage of other people out there. Um, and we have to keep pace with that. So soccer remains a very safe community. We're pleased with where we are safety-wise. We're pleased with where we are as a community. Uh, we've always felt ourselves to be part of the community. We don't solve community problems without the community's involvement. And because we're a community policing agency, uh, that's an important note for us to keep in mind as we're out there driving around. It's funny to note or to recall that even though our jobs change within this agency or, or within society, the job, fundamental job of the law enforcement officer remains the same. It is to keep our community safe. It's to make our citizens feel safe because the two, while related, aren't always the same thing. That feeling of safety uh, corroborates roughly to the to the rate of crime, but it sometimes uh, uh, you may not feel safe at two o'clock in the morning, for example, because it's dark out and the types of people who are out at two o'clock in the morning are not the same types of people who are out at two o'clock in the afternoon. Any police officer will tell you that. Um, we still are charged with maintaining the public order. We have records going back to as far as 1867 or so when one or two patrol officers patrolled the city streets and were apparently enough because they kept that model for 20 or 30 or 40 years. Um, times change and as society changes, the police department changes. But that basic tenet of our role never changes, and that's with the, working with the community to keep our community safe. We have a one cop, uh, one beat kind of a system where we leave officers in the same geographical area tied day after day. It's, it's their shift. So when problems come up, they're more familiar with what the problems are, uh, who the individuals are that are involved in the problems, and I th we think it makes for a, a uh, it encourages ownership for the officer, you're not as apt to get a very quick but shallow response to a problem because the officer will be going back the next week or the next month or the next day to handle the same problem. It tends to make sure the problems get handled with a little bit uh, more in-depth analysis and, uh, and a little bit more completely. We would rather deal with an issue effectively in the, in the, with its first occurrence or two. And to most extent, we're able to do that.
Our biggest challenges remain two. One is budgetarily, of course. This is a tough economic climate. The police department is affected, uh, as is every other city department, as is every other family in the city. And, and we know that uh, economically, we are not over that hump yet. We don't think that we are. Um, technology is affected by budgetary decisions that we make. Technology in the last 30 years has been the biggest change in law enforcement. You know, when we started three, three and a half decades ago, we didn't have computers. Nothing was computerized. All hand searches for fingerprints were done manually. Uh, DNA wasn't yet even on the radar screen for police departments. We solve a surprising number of cases with DNA now. This is technology that seemed kind of Star Wars years ago. And now, frankly, is run of the mill. And we don't do that without investing in technology. And investing in good technology and cutting edge technology takes funding. It just does. You know when it's, it's time to find something else to do and you get up and the prospect of going to work is less attractive than a prospect of staying home. I'm a long ways from that now. I think the work that we're doing is important. I think it's exciting. I think that when I come to work, there's a certain unpredictability to law enforcement and to public service um, that keeps it uh, interesting for us. And I'm surrounded by good staff and that regardless of any decision I make in three, four, five, or eight years, uh, the city is very well served by the people that work here. Thanks for watching Inside City Hall, where we delved into the different levels and departments of government here in the city of Saco. I'm Justin Schnett. Thanks for watching.